Getting back over into DC, but this is not the normal DC. This is that young animal imprint. And we're talking about Far Sector number one. This is going to have three different covers. You have that regular cover. There's a Martin Bro variant as well as a McKelvey variant. I usually like the A cover on here, but I'm a big fan of McKelvey's art. So I'll probably pick up that as well. But tell us more about this book, Jack. Well, Brian, this one's real interesting. Honestly, this is a bit of a spec play. And we say that because it appears that there's going to be a first appearance of a new Green Lantern character. Um, this is a little odd coming out of the Young Animal imprint, which has tended to do kind of like those out there characters from the DC Comics universe like Mother Panic and Doom Patrol. This gets a little bit more mainstream. But for the past six months, newly chosen Green Lantern Sojourner Joe Mullen – uh, has been protecting the city enduring a massive metropolis of 20 billion people. The city has maintained peace for over 500 years by stripping its citizens of their ability to feel. And as a result, violent crime is virtually unheard of and murder is non-existent. But that's all about to change in this new maxi series that gives DC Young Animal a spin to the legacy of the Green Lanterns. I think that there is going to be some speculation paid attention to this series. We know that any time in the past when DC has brought in a new Green Lantern, whether it was Baz or Jessica Cruz, we have seen heat in the secondary market for that character. Here we have a new Green Lantern. We have a story that's kind of out there and different and I think could get some reader buzz. And being on the Young Animal imprint, I could see this being a much smaller print run than a typical Green Lantern book. This is one to keep an eye out for from a speculation perspective as well as a reader buzz perspective because the solicitation in and of itself has me interested in wanting to read it. Now, I will admit I am a Green Lantern fan. I try to read everything that I can Green Lantern, so I, this is one I will definitely read. But I think an African-American, at least that's the way it comes off in the cover, uh, African-American female Green Lantern um, is one that I think will have some buzz in the market. I think it's one to pay attention to. Um, and, and like I said, there's precedent in the past for success from from new Green Lantern characters. So this is one to be on the lookout for, for sure. And it's also important to know that the artist is Jamal Campbell, who is the artist on Naomi. And so we know the heat that that book saw. That's one thing I was putting the correlation to also is, I mean... I want to sit there and grasp at straws, but it is important to know that Jamal Campbell is doing the art on this, who also is doing the art on Naomi. And you've also seen people uh, referencing the logo on Naomi's costume and tying it to the Green Lantern universe somehow. Either way, you brought up a good point about how this book might be under order because it's on the Young Animal imprint. And then also with the think of a title of Far Sector, if they're not aware, they not might, they might not know it's a Green Lantern type tie-in, so to say. I mean, it says... DC Young Animals puts their spin on the legacy of Green Lanterns at the final of the solicit. Great book. We're both Green Lantern fans, so I'm in it for the reading ability alone. And if it, p it picks up speculation-wise, that's just an added bonus. Right, and I tell you what, Brian, a little kind of nugget of information for all of my history buffs out there. One thing that I think that gives an idea of where this book is going to head is I think that this Green Lantern character is going to be kind of an abolitionist for the people. Um, and I think that the name Sojourner as her first name is a clear reference to Sojourner Truth, who was a uh, women's rights activist. Um, I think that that is probably a kind of nod to her and kind of gives us an idea where this story is going to go. I think she's going to fight for the rights of the people who have had those kind of feelings stripped away from them. I think that's where this story is probably going to end up going. Long-term play of the week. This is one of the bowl list you might notice we haven't talked about yet, but we're going to talk about it right now, and that is Far Sector number one. This comes from that DC Young Animal imprint. We did talk about this on the last call, but this is your long-term play, Jack. Yeah, we talked about this on the last call, Brian, and we sort of predicted what was going to happen with this today. What did we talk about? We talked about first appearance of a new Green Lantern, right? An interesting perspective and take on a, on a Green Lantern. We talked about the fact that it was coming from a young animal imprint, right? And the fact that their books don't get printed heavily. I think a lot of people ran into that today when they were trying to hunt this book. Um, we talked about the fact that it wasn't called Green Lantern, right? The title wasn't Green Lantern. And I think that helped this book slip by people's radar. And then it's the perfect timing with the HBO announcement. 
I think people are kind of off when they're saying that they think this is the story that uh, the HBO series is yeah. going to be. They're, they're not going to put that much money into something that, that doesn't have much awareness yet. I wouldn't see it. I can see it being an appearance or a character on the show at some point. but Right. I, and I could be totally wrong. I've been wrong before, but I, I can't. Just based on experience, right, Brian? I can't see it either. Um, I would. Why would you do that when you could do... Especially when you're going up against the last Green Lantern production that you had. Right, you need the next thing you do, Green Lantern, to be solid. Um, and it's not like, if you want to go minority characters, I mean, they have Jessica Cruz, they have Baz, they have Jon Stewart. Um, so they have options. But this is a great book. Um, you and I, were we mentioned that we're Green Lantern fans, right? We mentioned when we talked about this on Last Call that we were excited for this one. We tried, again, to let you guys know. That's why we do the Last Call show. We try to let you guys know in Simpleman's Comics family. Um, what we're seeing when we look at these previews list. Brian, have you seen the secondary market sales on this book today? I haven't looked. 15 to $16 a book. Sets of the three going for about $40 on Wednesday. Um, this, is being, I, this is being grabbed by the flippers. This is what happens, guys. guys this is, and this is why we try to talk to you guys about FOC. Maybe you couldn't make it out to the comic shop today. Um, maybe you were on the fence about this. Um, those flippers are out there now, right? Because it's going for good money. Uh, I had a feeling this was going to happen when I started to see the buzz build yesterday. Um, Brian, you'll attest, and my Simpleman's Comics family uh, Patreon members know, um, and I'm going to put a little Patreon plug in here. Uh, we had a rough draft of the list posted to Patreon on Monday. We had the final list posted to Patreon on Tuesday before it was released to the public on Wednesday. Um, that is a new weekly thing that we're going to do now that we are independent. Um, so expect to see that. That is another reason to sign up for that Simpleman's Comics Patreon. I let you guys know that I believe Far Sector was the long-term play of the week. Um, I still believe in it long-term, but it turned out to be also a short-term play, and I'm not surprised by that at all. And that, again, that brings in the flippers. And flippers are different than speculators. A speculator is somebody who looks at a book, book and says, I think this is going to be good long-term, right? A flipper is somebody who goes, I don't care what this book is. I can buy it right now for $4 and sell it for 16 and I'll take my you know, $8 after shipping and whatever profit and be happy with that. And we're seeing a lot of that with this book. So that is going to make these copies dry up even more. Um, this is going to be tough. I hope you guys put this one on your pull list. But great read, a book that got solid buzz, um, a new voice in the writer. Um, I think his name's N.K. Jemison or Jem Jemison, but a new kind of a newer writer uh, I wasn't familiar with. Uh, I like the cover art. I think the cover art isn't crazy, right? It's not like you're not seeing like some huge name artists, but they all do what they need to do. They put the character of uh, Sojourner Mullen kind of like front and center. Um, I used the cover B as the background for the bolo list. So if you notice the bolo list graphic, you'll see that background. I really like that cover. I like the way the bright green props. But really, I like all these covers. I think cover A long term is probably the cover to get. I like but, cover A is my favorite. I mean, I'm a I'm a fan of some McKelvey art, which is that cover C, right? But yeah. to me, I just like the cover A. I mean, you can kind of say this for the cover B too. But for cover A, to me, I mean, that is like a Green Lantern cover. Well, and then I, I, I kind of, um, nothing to do with, say, like racial or gender comparison. To compare it to Naomi, um, this book is getting major critical acclaim. Yeah. And when that happens, and you have kind of the IGNs and the sci fi of the world reporting on it, they're always showing that cover A image. And I think it's going to make the moderate comic collecting crowd or kind of the following the leader of the FOMO crowd. They're going to go for that cover because that's what they see posted in those articles. We've talked about that before on the channel. So long term, that would be my bet. But I don't think it matters, man. If you can find these books at your LCS for cover price, I think you grab them. I really believe in this book long term. Cover B and C, it's interesting, were sold out at Midtown days ago. So there, there was all, a lot of indication here that this was going to happen. Um, and again, I, uh, to make one more pump for it. Tune into that last call show because, you know, we are trying to give you guys as best we can. Again, we're doing our opinion, and it's not all speculation-based. We're just giving you um, our opinion on what books interest us the most. But the thing about it is, 
the books that interest us tend to also interest other people in the market. So you're starting to notice a trend. And, uh, you know, we want to help you get the books that you want for your collection the cheapest and easiest that we can. So you're not out there chasing these books, $15, $16. Do I think this book will drop a few dollars? I think it has the potential to drop a few dollars, right? As people get their online orders in, as these flippers keep selling it to other speculators and things like that. But at the same point, Naomi didn't really drop, right? Naomi went and became a $50, $60 book. So there's a good chance that this could happen with this because we're not looking at a huge print run for this book. But exciting story. Brian, you were really excited to read this one. You were talking to me about it before we got on the air. Um, kind of a mystery So yeah, story. Um, I also want to say, I mean, you were talking about Naomi. The similarity with that is you have the same interior artist with Jamal Campbell. Jamal Campbell, And yeah. the art in here, it's nothing that's like super duper detailed. But man, it just fits the narrative of the story so well. It's just... I, I, I'm not like an art critic or anything like that, but for me, it just fit, it fit the tone. It made it to where the, it was nice to look at, and the comic wasn't too wordy. And I was telling Jack this before. I was like, it was a great read. I hate it when there's like all these little uh, bubbles that you're trying to do that their narration to tell you the backstory, and there's just so many of it that you end up skipping over half of them, or at least I tend to. But you didn't have that in here. It was just enough. And it's basically almost like, I want to say murder mystery, but yeah, there hasn't been a murder in 500 years and there's a murder in far sector because she's in the furthest sector out for Green Lanterns and they don't even know if it has a number, but someone gets murdered. They haven't had a murder in 500 something years and that's kind of where the story picks up. Um, great, great read. Uh, can't say enough good things about it. as a Green Lantern fan. And then I'm happy to see a story like this on the Young Animal imprint. Because they've been hit or miss with some of their titles, at least in my opinion. Huge Mother Panic fan. And Far Sector is another one that one issue in, I really like. Yeah, and I can already see this one going. I'm going to make the comparison again, the Naomi route, where I think this miniseries will do well. And then I think they will eventually bring her into the DC Universe continuity somewhere. And that will have to be popular. So, uh, you know, if you're not on the Sojourner uh, Mullen kind of uh, train now you may want to think about doing um this is a major first appearance and you know before we're done talking about this book this book was in the first appearance section it was in the reader buzz section and it was in the variant buzz section you don't see that very often and that's where you know you've really got a home run and that's why it is the long-term play of the week real quick before you mentioned you can see her popping over into dc continuity as a reader of this book I want to see the opposite first. I want to see people from DC continuity show up in this young animal imprint in this in this title series, and then eventually use her in those other DC type titles. Because I think this that sets the tone, sets this whole um, I want to say universe because it exists within that Green Lantern universe. But yeah. yeah, great read, and I agree it makes a great long term play for you this week, Jack. 